In the next few minutes, I'm gonna show you how you can integrate geofencing into your mobile app to start engaging customers in the real world. Let's jump in. So you might have seen these little location-based alerts pop up on your device. Maybe you're out and about, and you're walking by a retailer, and then you get a push notification. It kind of seems like it was at the right place and the right times. So what's a technology that runs this behind the scenes? You've heard about the iBeacon, and maybe you think geofencing uses some kind of hardware, but you'd be wrong. Geofences has absolutely nothing to do with iBeacons, and we've covered that, and we'll be going into more detail in uh, newer videos that I'll be working on, but geofences are actually a virtual perimeter. So you think of your business here on, let's say, a Google map, you would log into a product, maybe like a, a Pulsate to do your geofencing, and you could define a shape, a circle around your, own, uh, around, around your own business. And then when customers enter this location, you're gonna engage them or you're gonna track them in some way. Now, it could also be a, a polygon. So most geofencing solutions are about a radial fence, but they're a little bit limited. You might wanna zoom in and do one specific business. So you may just want to geofence your own location and to find that on a map. You don't want to get passers-by, you don't want to get your competitors, you don't want to get surrounding areas. You just want to zone right in. So there's two different levels. There's the radial stuff, which is a little bit bigger, a little bit broader, and polygonal is about getting down into uh, very, very granular zones. So how does this work? These are virtual and putting them on a Google map and then, you know, without any hardware, I can know that a customer has entered this location. It sounds like magic. It sounds like it's too good to be true, but there is actually um, some sensors on board a mobile device on our smartphones that is just as accurate and in, in, in most cases more accurate than what beacons can actually provide. So for this type of geofencing to work, you know, you have this guy, he's entered into your location, he has the mobile device on him. But you do need an app on the phone as well for this to work. So you have an app that's being downloaded onto the device, that retailer or whatever it is, and usually the app will integrate some kind of an SDK or plugin that actually does the geofencing. For you to try and build this all into your own mobile app from scratch, it's gonna be a lot of work, so chances are you're hiring some other product or plugin to do this for you. So you have your app, you integrate the SDK into the app, and then once integrated, this SDK or plugin begins manipulating and reading data from sensors that are on board the smartphone. Things like the cell tower. And as we have the mobile phone and it's judging distance here to the cell tower, it's also looking at different Wi-Fi networks that will be in the surrounding area. And by creating a map of where these Wi-Fi networks are in conjunction with the cell tower data, the mobile device and our plugin, as in Pulsate, gets a very good bearing on where the customer is uh, down to a specific location around a business. And it can do this in a very low power way. So that's how it works. That's the underlying technology. Uh, you do need an app. You need it integrated on the device with some kind of an SDK. If you just wanna track that customers have shown up there in the real world and they've been there, that's cool. You can do that without needing push notifications. But chances are, as customers step up, step up into that fence, that you wanna alert them in some way. You wanna give them an offer. You wanna increase that foot traffic into your business. So that's when push notifications come in. You need some kind of a push notification service to send a helpful reminder when the customer is in the area. You may even want some kind of a CMS so that you're reaching out uh, and engaging customers not only at the right time, but you have the platform to maintain the offers, the vouchers, the coupons, the messages of what you might be sending and to do the segmentation. So these are just some of the things that you might need. Now there are the basics, but what are the benefits of you bringing geofencing into your business and into your app? So let's take a look at that next. So the top four benefits, be more contextual. Being uh, relevant in 2016 in the world when customers show up at that right time and right place, it's about having something to say, that's incredibly relevant. And you do this by being contextual. Geofences are a great way to be contextual. We also can get great business intelligence from geofencing. So the places that you show up in the physical world create inferences 
around your interests and what kind of a person you are. So there's great uh, BI and MI that can come out of this. Of course, there's the analysis of competitor locations. What customers are loyal that also frequent our competitors? And by understanding that you know, our main competition is Starbucks and we have you know, people on our loyalty program that actually visit Starbucks you know, three times a week, well, they're really not that loyal. So geofencing can give you insights into where these customers are going in the physical world that are not your locations and maybe competitor locations as well. You can use geofencing, of course, as well to improve your sales and um, to bring people into your location to increase that foot traffic and to understand and then leverage the customer frequency and combine it with the competitive data as well. And of course, lastly, we can improve our app churn. When we engage customers based uniquely on their own context and where they show up for us in the world can make our app seem like it has a higher utility value to keep customers coming back for more. So that's it, my video on the benefits of geofencing and tips to get you started, the basics. I'd invite you to take a look at my next video, which you can do so by clicking the link below. And I'm gonna be giving you a checklist. If you're looking for this technology in the market, what are the things that you need to tick off on the list to make sure you get the best software possible? So that's it for this video. I'm Patrick Letty, see you guys next time. Map, and you might define a circular region. A marker doesn't even work.